In this lecture, we'll start talking about higher order differential equations, specifically homogeneous linear equations that have constant coefficients. So to solve a linear equation with constant coefficients, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find an auxiliary equation. So all of the homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients will take the form a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. All right. So this is for a second order equation. Obviously, if we had uh, the third derivative or fourth derivative, we could add those terms on there as well. But it's always going to be some constant coefficient times the dependent variable and its derivatives. And when we add those together, it's going to give us zero. So again, a, b, and c they have to be constants for this to for this to work out. Right. We're going to assume that the solution takes the form y equals e to the mx. And the reason for that is because if we take constant multiples of a function y and its derivatives, the only way that those can cancel each other out is if they're the same. And the only function that we have where the derivative takes the same form as the actual function is the exponential. So we're going to assume that y equals e to the mx. And then that means that y prime is m e to the mx, and y double prime is m squared e to the mx. If we plug those values into our differential equation, we get a m squared e to the mx plus b m e to the mx plus c e to the mx is equal to zero. Now all of these terms have an e to the mx in it, so we can factor that out. So e to the mx times am squared plus bm plus c has to equal zero. And e to the mx doesn't ever equal zero. So that means that that quadratic, am squared plus bm plus c, that must equal zero. And so this, this equation, am squared plus bm plus c, this is called the auxiliary equation for our differential equation. And the roots of this auxiliary equation are going to dictate the solution to our differential equation. All right, so to solve these equations, to solve linear equations that have constant coefficients and are homogeneous, we want to find the roots of the auxiliary equation. And there are three cases that we can come up with. So the first case is where the roots are distinct and real. So we get two different real numbers, m1 and m2. So that means that our solutions would be y1 equals e to the m1x and y2 equals e to the m2x. These are linearly independent, and so we can form the general solution by using the superposition principle or forming a linear combination of the two. So y equals c1 e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x. And if we had additional real roots, we would just continue adding terms onto the end of that. So we could add c3 e to the m3x, so on and so forth. All right, our second case is when we get repeated real roots. So those are where we find our two roots, m1 and m2, but they're actually the same value. And so this would give us that y1 equals e to the m1x, and y2 would be the same thing. Well, since these two are the exact same thing, they would not be linearly independent. And so what we would need to do to gain linear independence is we're going to multiply one of them by x to remove the repetition there. So we'll take y1 equals e to the m1x and y2 equals x e to the m1x. And so our general solution would be y equals c1 e to the m1x plus c2x e to the m1x. The third case for our auxiliary equation is when we come up with complex conjugate roots. So we get m1 equals alpha plus or minus beta times i. Now if we plug those into our general formula or general solution, we get y equals c1 e to the alpha plus beta ix plus c2 e to the alpha minus beta ix. But we can manipulate this using Euler's formula that says e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine theta, and a little bit of algebra, we can rewrite those solutions as y equals e to the alpha x times c1 cosine beta x plus c2 sine beta x. So let's do a few examples. 
Our first example is we want to solve y double prime minus 10y prime plus 25y equals 0. We start by forming our auxiliary equation. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to replace our y's with m's and the derivatives will become powers. So this will become m squared minus 10m plus 25 equals 0. To find the solution to the differential equation, we need to find the roots of this auxiliary equation. So we can factor this out. This is m minus 5 times m minus 5 equals 0. And so that's going to give us m equals 5 or m equals 5. So we get two roots that are repeated. This represents a case 2 problem. So it's case 2 repeated roots. And so that means that we're going to form our solution y1 equals c1e to the 5x plus c2. We're going to add an x into this to maintain linear independence, e to the 5x. So y equals c1e to the 5x plus c2x e to the 5x. And that'll be the solution to our differential equation. All right, second example, we want to solve y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0. So again, we start by forming our auxiliary equation m squared minus 3m plus 2 equals 0. We can factor this out. So this is m minus 2 times m minus 1 equals 0. And then we can solve for our roots. So we get m equals 1 or m equals 2. And so these are going to be distinct real roots. So this represents a case 1. And so with distinct real roots, we'll just use each root to form part of the solution. So our solution will be y equals c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the 2x. And note that the order that you do this doesn't matter. If you put y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the x, that'd be a perfectly valid solution as well. All right, third example. This time we have 2y double prime minus 3y prime plus 4y equals 0. Again, we start by forming the auxiliary equation. So 2m squared minus 3m plus 4 equals 0. And then we solve the auxiliary equation. Now, this equation can't be factored. So to find its solution, we're going to need to use the quadratic formula. So remember, the quadratic formula says that the root, in this case m, is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Right? So that's our quadratic formula. If we plug in a is 2, b is negative 3, and c is 4, we would get m equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 2 times 4 all divided by 4. If we simplify this, we get 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 23 over 4. And we can rewrite the square root of negative 23 as 23, root 23 times i. So our roots are going to be 3 fourths plus the square root of 23 over 4i, or 3 fourths minus the square root of 23 over 4i. So if we look at these complex conjugate roots, this is a case 3 problem. Our alpha value is 3 over 4, and our beta value is root 23 over 4. So we'll take that alpha and beta, and we'll put it into the solution form. And we'll get y equals 3 fourths, excuse me, y equals e to the 3 fourths x times c1 cosine of root 23 over 4 x plus c2 sine of root 23 over 4 x. And so that'll be the solution to our differential equation. Now we can apply the same method for higher order equations. So we've talked about a several second order differential equations, but we could do third or fourth or fifth order as well. So it's the same process. The first thing that we would do is we would find an auxiliary equation. So if we have y triple prime, so the third derivative of y plus 3y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals 0, we would start by finding an auxiliary equation. So m cubed plus 3m squared minus 4m minus 12 equals 0. And we would factor this out. So we're going to factor this by grouping. We'll group our first two terms together. 
We'll group our second two terms together, and then we'll factor a common term out of both of these. So in our first group, m cubed plus 3m squared, we can factor an m squared out. So that would give us m squared times m plus 3. In our second group, negative 4m minus 12, we could factor a negative 4 out. So that would give us negative 4 times m plus 3. Now notice we have m plus 3 in both of these terms, so we can factor that out from both terms. So this becomes m squared minus 4 times m plus 3. And we can further factor m squared minus 4. So that becomes m plus 2 times m minus 2 times m plus 3. This all equals 0, so we can find our roots. Our roots will be m equals negative 2, positive 2, and negative 3. Those are all distinct, so that means that we'll just use three distinct terms in our solution. So y equals c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the 2x plus c3 e to the minus 3x. And so that would be a solution to this differential equation. Let's look at another example that has a higher order differential equation. So this time we have the fourth derivative of y minus 2y double prime plus y equals 0. And again, we're going to start by finding our auxiliary equation. So that'll be m to the fourth minus 2m squared plus 1 equals 0. We can factor this out. So this factors to be m squared minus 1 times m squared minus 1. And we can further factor that out. So each of those m squared minus 1s, we could factor to be m plus 1 times m minus 1. So we get m plus 1 times m minus 1 times m plus 1 times m minus 1. So our roots are going to be m equals negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So we have the root of negative 1 repeated twice. We have the root of positive 1 repeated twice. So this is going to be a combination of distinct real roots and repeated roots. So to form our solution, we're just going to use each of these roots to create a term. And whenever there's a repetition, we'll add an x into our term. So we're going to get y equals c1 e to the minus x plus c2 e to the x plus c3 x e to the minus x plus c4 x e to the x. And so that'll be the solution to this differential equation. Let's look at one final example. So this time we have the fourth derivative of y minus 7y double prime minus 18y equals 0. So again, we'll start by finding our auxiliary equation. That's going to be m to the fourth minus 7m squared minus 18 equals 0. And then we solve for the roots of this equation. So we can factor this out. This is going to be m squared minus 9 times m squared plus 2 equals 0. We can further factor the first term out, so that's m minus 3 times m plus 3, and then m squared plus 2 equals 0. We'll set each root equal to 0 and solve, so we'll get roots of m equals 3, m equals negative 3, and then from m squared plus 2, we would get plus or minus the square root of 2 times i. So here we have distinct real roots, but we also have complex conjugate roots. So when we form our solution, 3 and negative 3 will take the form c1 e to the 3x, c2 e to the negative 3x. And the plus or minus root 2i, our alpha here is 0, and our beta is the square root of 2. So we would plug that into the form for a complex conjugate root. So we're going to get y equals c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the minus 3x plus e to the 0x times c3 cosine times the square root of 2x plus c4 sine of the square root of 2 times x. All right, e to the 0x, that's 1, so that'll go away basically. So we'll have c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the minus 3x plus c3 cosine root 2x plus c4 sine root 2x. And that'll be our solution.